Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another show of harmonics. Today's guest, outstanding musician, outstanding documentary man, producer, one of the great musicians on our scene today, Mark White. Mark White, whoa, bro. What? <laughs> How's it going? It's going good, brother. How you feeling? Good, man. I'm feeling pretty good. Good. I'm just uh, doing real well right now. How are you doing? I'm doing with you, man. I'm, you know, it's, I'm so happy to have you on the show. You got a lot to talk about. Uh, hopefully, yeah, yeah, Mark. Yeah, he does. So, Mark, let me ask you, uh, how did it all start with you in getting into music? Was it an early age? Whereabouts did you start really gravitating towards music? Well, after I was born, <laughs> um, my dad was a professional jazz musician. Hmm. And uh, he played piano, and he was a singer and a crooner. And he had a band, uh, a trio, with uh, Dave Lario. Uh, Hanky Ruby on drums, Dave Lario on bass, and him playing piano. So mm -hmm. they called it the Dennis White Trio. And when I was a little kid, he had a baby Grand Steinway in the in the living room, or, uh, and I'd come home from school or wherever, and mm -hmm. he'd be in there, you know, fly me to the moon. And, Serious business. And uh, and and so my house was full of music, mm. and um, I started playing sax in third grade, and that was my main instrument. I just started doing that, and then we'd put on concerts at school, and you Beautiful. know, and start playing with my dad a little bit. And then mm -hmm. fifth grade came around, and I saw a drum set, and I started, you know, pulling the pots and pans out, you know, and spinning them on the uh, the kitchen floor, and all the lids going at once, you know, and I would get uh, the 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 ladles and whatever yeah. as drumsticks, yeah. and my mom would come in and just go. <laughs> so that's where it started. Really? Seriously? Yeah. Sounds like my brother. Uh, Marco, the same way, man, at four years old. It was like, what? What are we doing here? And then my, my parents, obviously, and they were artists also, and, they, and, and you know, they just, add, you know, just made them grow and grow and, and just made it happen for him. So you got into that. You played sax. How long did you play sax? Until junior high, high school? Well, I, I played it through elementary and big time in junior high. We were in a... Uh, uh, junior high jazz band, A band, marching band. We were the only junior high marching band around, and mm -hmm. then we ended up doing a in the in the uh, jazz band and in A band. We did a tour to Canada for a week. Wow, <laughs> that's my first tour. Mm -hmm. And we went in a bus, and uh, we played like five different schools in Kamloops and the surrounding area in Canada. Mm -hmm. And that was my first taste of being on the road. Did you like it at that time too? I loved it. I discovered Queen. <laughs> oh. Because we were going to record shops there, and I, my first record was uh, uh, Queen one. I can't remember the name of it, and then, but the one I do remember is Paranoid by Black Sabbath. So great album. We started great getting album. into that mm -hmm. at, at, at that that little band tour in mm -hmm. seventh grade, mm -hmm. and then played. Uh, I switched more to drums at that point, oh. and took private lessons with sax mm -hmm. through one of my dad's teachers, Alex Kruchin. I don't mm -hmm. know what happened to him. What a player, mm -hmm. and. Uh, and and just uh, started, you know, got into high school and, mm -hmm. and started playing high school bands mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And then just did the sax at the side, and then I broke my tooth. And um, so I put kind of the sax down oh. and uh, started playing drums. And that was, is, is that your main instrument now still? I mean, I know I've seen you play guitar also. You no, play, I don't no? play guitar. Was I that play just air guitar. Okay, there you go. All right. That's because you were talking about that. And uh, that's funny that you said air guitar. Uh, was that inspired by Eddie Van Halen or when they remember because everybody was doing trying to do a eruption? Well, or, well, back back in the 80s, mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when you were a kid growing up in the 80s, mm -hmm. when the rock was king, mm -hmm. you know, we would all. Yeah, of course, you know, jam out in the uh, fireplace mantle. <laughs> <laughs> we were stars, you know. Yeah. And then uh, then lip sync contests came into play. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. before karaoke, there was lip sync contests everywhere. And uh, I was 19, and I'm like, I'm going to do that. And so four years later, I went to uh, 
I went to Cabo San Lucas once after winning a big grand prize winner. I went to Hawaii twice. And then we, uh, we were at De Anza College television station studio and we made uh, about 20 uh, videos of us doing all that. That must and, be hilarious. And uh, we won some awards for, we did a little bit of a small documentary on the Grateful Dead and things like that. But yeah, it was pretty funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's where my air guitaring lip sync came from. Some of you <laughs> might remember that, whoever's out there still remembers. Oh, one of my, one of the uh, people that are cameraman, he just, he has actually did a movie, or it's still in the making, Turin about air guitars. Oh. And you know, it's kind of it's kind of hilarious. A, yeah. <laughs> friend one putting on the putting on the hits. Mm -hmm. That lip sync thing. And he still oh. today at fifty seven does air guitar contests. I'm retired. <laughs> They're trying to get me to come back out, but I used to shoot fire out of my guitar. Oh man, you're fun. you're killing me. But I did that and, and then played in bands mm -hmm. and stuff. So when you put when you played in bands, you just played drums and that was your main instrument yeah. playing in drums? Yeah. And and backup then, singing. Then how uh, okay, yeah, you got a good voice. So you've got into you started forming into but what got you into um, into rock where you actually became an outstanding ro roadie for a couple bands, different bands, and then you fell right into the, the lap of Y&T. And how long were you with them? Well, backing up to answer your questions, yeah. I got into rock. You know, I was a skateboarder, a half piper, swimming pool guy. All right, all um, right. And when I heard 2112, that pretty much by Rush, mm -hmm. that was it for me. I'm mm -hmm. like, that's what I want to do. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, played in high school bands. Uh, and then got into my first band playing for real and getting paid for it. Imagine that um, in a 1986, believe it or not. Mm -hmm. And that band was called Explosive Joseph and the Photons. Uh, interesting. What's yes. photons? Well, it was a particle of energy okay. that shot straight at you. Oh, okay. And, uh, but then it, it, it went down to Explosive Joseph, and that derived from this guy who created this this cartoon sort of character animated guy that would he was jumping through the air with a guitar and, and landing on one of those boxes that you would you know set detonate. off and explode a detonator right. box right. so I, I don't know they came up with it not me oh. but we were a cover band and then wrote some originals for mm -hmm. about 10 years mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. went on to another band called Velvet Jones we were a club band we played corporate parties weddings uh, you name it we did it mm -hmm. but uh, back in the day when I I used to work at Shoreline Amphitheater. I started there in 1986. Wow. And worked there until 1994 or so. And we used to rehearse on the on stage. On the big stage? Yeah. How lucky. And then in the keg coolers in the wintertime because it was cold. So I had to key to all the doors. So that's wow. another story. That is, that's a great backstory. <laughs> yeah. I used to run uh, Trust Spotlights uh, for all the shows. I worked every single show there. Mm -hmm. I ran the uh, DB meter to, mm -hmm. so to the sure inversion layer wouldn't, wouldn't right. carry the sound into Palo Alto. Mm -hmm. I worked, I was an assistant electrician and I was also in charge of the methane gas recovery system. How do I do it? I don't even know. That sounds kind of <laughs> dangerous, right? You could have been well, the detonator. The doors <laughs> didn't open unless I said it was safe. So really? It seriously? It was quite the, quite the job. So you, you definitely had a lot of a, a responsibility at that time. I was the gas man. <laughs> you were the gas man. So what you were levitating up and up and, and playing in different bands and doing different things. Where did you get? OK, so let's let's go right here. <laughs> when did you start doing what you do with documentaries? How did you get into that or how did you get into the one that you, we're going to talk about in a few minutes? Well, um, back backing up a little bit mm -hmm. back when I was doing the lip sync contest, mm -hmm. I was solely into what's happening here. Mm -hmm. And we would make that. So I learned a lot about TV with uh, three tube cameras and and we would go out and shoot stuff. So that was my beginning of, of, mm -hmm. of that sort of thing. And, mm -hmm. and then going, working at Shoreline and and learning all of the the inside because they used to video all the shows and they'd be on the screen. So I knew mm -hmm. all the guys and I started learning about that stuff in there. And, and uh, I worked for Tower Power, toured with them, lighting merchandising announcer uh, in the 90s. And... Um, Fast forward, whoop, mm -hmm. how did I get into Y&T? Way before the Tower Power, one of my favorite bands, grew up with them in Oakland, uh, you know, East Bay, Greece, whatever, all of it. Um, how was, because they worked so much, how, was, how long did you have to go on the road with them? 
How long did you work with them? I worked with them on the Monster on a Leash tour, 91, 92, 93. Mm -hmm. and I was, I was working with a guy named Richard Chiquetto mm -hmm. as their uh, merchandising guy. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, when they're on the road, they needed a lighting guy, so I did that. <laughs> and then they needed an, an announcer. And so for every show, they would give me the mic and I'd get the crowd going. And, uh, you know, give me, give me, give me, give it to us. I said, are you ready? Well, get off your chair and get your hands in the air. Epic recording artist, Tower of Power. Well, I would say from <laughs> Oakland or whatever, something like that. Yeah. And then they'd go crazy. And I'd do my little dance and hand the microphone off to uh, Tom Bowes, who was mm -hmm. the singer at the time. We had a great time on the road. That was my first time actually going on tour extensive, with, a, right? with a real band. Wouldn't that be extensive? Yeah, they U.S. Were... for me. Uh-huh. I how long was to. it? How long did they go on the road? When you Those were... guys are still on the road. I, I'm telling you, and they are nonstop. Nonstop They're a machine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, but I know that's all political. Yeah, they should funk be. and roll. But yeah, man, come on. So uh, you started learning all the, about the cameras. You have, man, you had a lot of responsibility. I uh, did. You well, know? backing up, how did I get into Y and T? Because yeah. that's kind of is the that precursor. right in the '90s? That's the no. That was the pre precursor for. Um, and I moved to Tahoe, and I got out of the whole music business mm -hmm. for a while, mm -hmm. and I went, um, I lived there. Now, I'm in the swimming pool business during the day. I know it's exciting. And hot tub. So if any of you need... Hot tubs are. Hot tub. Hot tub. Uh, Get on your hot tub! Swimming pool where A&L Pool and Spa Inc. right here in San Jose. I love it. Um, so in 2010, I uh, was back living in the Bay Area. I lived in Tahoe for a while. And uh, I hooked up with my old friend Mike Vanderhue, because I was at a Y&T show. And uh, I was like, yeah, because I had, hadn't seen him in a long time. And, mm -hmm. and Dave Medicutti's on drums, Mike Vanderhuel. I'm like, Mike Vanderhuel? I know that guy. And so I, uh, I got a hold of him after the show, and, and, um, and then we kind of talked a little bit after the show and mm -hmm. then uh, started taking drum lessons from him because I never took drum lessons before. Mm, interesting. And, uh, and then I opened my big mouth, and I said, you know, if you ever need a tech, uh, a drum tech or guitar tech. I have a little bit of experience, you know, working hundreds of shows uh, through the union and, and stagehand at Shoreline and, and uh, touring with Tower Power and playing my own band, etc. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he goes, well, he threw it, my name in the hat and long story short, mm -hmm. they called me up and uh, said, hey, we'd like you to go on tour with us next week. And uh, that was, uh, that was a nine year Nine year, uh, 300 shows, toured the US I, about three times, mm -hmm. went to Wales, Germany, Hawaii, Canada, and I was a stage manager, guitar, and drum tech for them mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. that time, working with a lot of people. And then, uh, how did I get to make the, where, let's just show it now for everybody. Here it is the YT documentary. I don't even know how this started, what you're about to witness. We kind of came out of the same out of the same little shoot together. How we were supposed to play, what we were supposed to play, we just winged it. It was raw. It's totally raw. And Blotzer goes, holy shit. And holy shit. He was kind of... Yeah, they were badass. これ、イエスタデントゥデイちゃんとデイメニケティのバンドじゃないっていうことでびっくりして。You can't chant yesterday and today. It's got too many man fill up. Y and T, Y and T. And it, okay, well, why don't we call ourselves Y and T? They were kings of their own scene, the way Twisted Sister was kings of our scene in the New York area. The power of that song, Mean Streak. You know, it just crushes you. I wish Leonard could have stayed in the band forever. He learned to play rock by playing with us. That's the, I think that's the beginning of my hearing loss, actually. You know, I was kind of in the back of my mind hoping that maybe I would be in the band someday. He had put a hole through the bass drum. I put my foot right through the bass drum head. Who ever puts a hole through the bass drum head? Dave all of a sudden just started ringing it.
like after about five songs in, I was feeling pretty good about it. I don't think people realize that how long someone like Y&T and myself have been around working. 75, you know, 74. It's the band that just won't quit. Lifers, the ones who last, those are the ones that are smitten by the music that found that bliss early in life and found no other acceptable alternative for what to do with their lives but to follow that bliss. And that's why I'm too. Yesterday and Today set the standard and broke new ground for the hard rock bands that follow. This is the story of one of America's most influential and enduring rock bands. I had been bringing my video camera uh, to all the shows and videoing stuff from behind Mike because I was the drum tech at the time right. and then guitar tech. And so I had always filmed stuff and I was making these little videos uh, along with, um, and, I, and I was working with my old buddy Jeff Gann, who, Jeff Gans, who was the co-producer of the Y&T documentary, on with the show, by the way, Excellent. and was an integral part of, of that, him and I as a team. Mm -hmm. um, we were at home writing songs, making videos and goofing off. And uh, one day I came up to Mike and Dave and I said, do you guys ever do a doc want to do a documentary? And they said, well, you know, it costs a lot of money to do that. And we thought about it and, you know, and I said, why don't you just let me do it? I opened my big mouth again. And uh, lo and behold, we struck a deal mm -hmm. and uh, kept it within the family. Mm -hmm. And it took four plus years to make. We did a, a 110 interviews, roughly, mm -hmm. and uh, and we finally got it done. <laughs> it was a four, lot of work. It was it was four and a half years that you actually yeah. from start to finish. And I'm sorry for all of the YNT fans out there who who heard that yes, we'll have it out in a year. Well, we were rookies. <laughs> <laughs> it was two guys with full time job and, and kids and and lives and mm -hmm. so we we worked probably ten hours a day each for four years mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. It took some days off here and there and uh, we finally got it done. So sorry about the wait, but hope you like it. What a nice guy! What a kind guy to actually uh, you know apologize to the fans. But that's that's who you, uh, Mark is, man. Just a good man. But Mark, you know you were um, you did that. And then you got almost, you got all of them, didn't you? Do you got, I think the only, did you, you got Phil also, right? Did no, you, we did not get Phil Kenamar. But Phil, you got, unfortunately, had passed away before I ever started mm -hmm. to work with mm -hmm. Y&T. Mm -hmm. And so we never got to interview him. There was, and, and, bef and doing the documentary, there was very little footage of him doing inter interviews at all. Really? Yeah, I mean, believe me, we dug deep mm -hmm. to find anything Phil related mm -hmm. with, through Dave's stuff and Leonard. Hayes, when we interviewed him, Love we Leonard. also interviewed Joey before they both passed mm -hmm, away, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and all the rest of the guys that were uh, in the band mm -hmm, at, uh, through the years. Leonard, all of his archival footage got burned in a fire. When it sounds burnt down, right? Was, yeah, that, it? was yep, that it? Yep. And mm -hmm. then Joey gave us what he had. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he. <laughs> and fortunately, we were able to uh, interview them. Mm -hmm. And it was it was amazing. And unfortunately, during the making of the whole thing, mm -hmm. they both died, and they never got to see. Oh, the finished product. And Jimmy, yeah. they're both great, monsters. Great. Monsters. Are they doing anything? Is Steph still playing with uh, Huey, or is he's done? Doing Steph, I believe he's doing a, a, a tour, just him and another guitar player. But he plays with uh, uh, Bosco Who? in Italy. Oh, Bosco something. Oh, yeah, right, Sorry. right, right, right. And then, right. Uh, and then, um, Degrasso does. Degrasso, he's been just playing locally, and mm -hmm. you know, he's played with everybody. Yes, he has. Everybody. Yes. It's it's quite a, quite a journey. And a monster and a, drummer. Monster drummer. I've seen him up close. I've seen him all the time. I've known Leonard since nineteen. Are you ready? I'm gonna throw out a time capsule since nineteen sixty five. Wow. You know. He was in a band called the Mustangs at times. Yeah. Great guy. We've, we've remained friends all, all these years. And I did, I think I did one of his last interviews when you guys were doing that special. That was then when they did the mm -hmm. thing. And Leonard wasn't there. And, but he did come on. Uh, he, you know, he's just a great guy. And then, you know, we, we actually, Blue Voodoo actually, which I'm going to give to you now. Cool. Hopefully. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this, man. We're going to do an exchange right now. This is Blue Voodoo. This is Blue Voodoo going over to... 
Mark White's hand. Yeah, and, and this uh, is the YNT documentary on with the show. And by the way, the Mustangs are in there. We're exchanging. We're exchanging. Did you get that? Come on. Wow. Come on, man. Come on. There we are. Look. Whoa. Whoa. How do we do it? We don't even know. Whoa. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Cheers. Um, cheers. Um, so how is it like, you know, like being on the road and you're the, you're the road, you're ho 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 moving a lot of gear. How do you stay in shape? How right, do you stay doing that? <laughs> but I mean, but how do you get your rest? Because you're like, you're there before the show. Yeah, well, we did, when I was full into it, we, mm -hmm. would, uh, we would have two sprinter vans, Mercedes sprinter vans, mm -hmm. one with the gear and the crew and one with the band. Mm -hmm. And we would travel together and uh, they would be two and a half months, 13,000 miles driving and about 29 shows roughly. And it was grueling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> My dog didn't even know me when I got back. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> He'd be like, no, no, it's me. And, you know, and the plants would have grown and all those mm -hmm. things. But uh, we would drive and we would get, you know, Holiday Inn Expresses. There's a plug for Holiday Inn Express. That's where we'd stay mostly. Uh -huh. But, uh, you know, how did I sleep? I, I would, uh, I'd have uh, Ambien. Uh, uh -huh. melatonin mm -hmm. and just get four hours if I could get four hours mm -hmm. you're okay you're I'm okay mm -hmm. but you know what the first three shows were complete brutal on the body mm -hmm. because you're not used to it but then you get acclimated mm -hmm. and then it's just a repetitive thing over and over mm -hmm. until you hurt your back or something <laughs> yeah. so how does the band how does the band work like that then I mean because that's a grueling you think of 13,000 miles how does the band do they get their proper rest too or is this well, they get more rest than we do. Mm -hmm. As the crew, we have to be there first. We have to, you know, we got to get there two hours before they even show up. Mm -hmm. And uh, we set up all the gear and make sure it all works. And then they show up, new sound check. Mm -hmm. And then and we sit around, have dinner, get mm -hmm. a little downtime. Then the show goes on, we're back to work. And as soon as the show's over, You're we got to pack it all up. And they're, they usually leave before we do. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we, uh, we load it all up and go back to the hotel, and then we have our own little party. Mm, good for you. <laughs> so good for that you. That kept us going. That's you know, a good thing. Lots of humor, lots of uh, uh, fun on mm -hmm. the road, mm -hmm. needless to say. Mm -hmm. So that, you're not doing that right now? You're not with them anymore? No, I have children. I have to. I have he has to take twin 16-year-old girls. Hi, Abby. Hi, Lily. And oh, that's I, I, have to, uh, I have to take care of them. Beautiful, and uh, mm -hmm. you know those they are my life. So, are no more life. touring for me, mm -hmm. Good. Uh, unless somebody really wants to pay a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> so you got a radio show, and a I podcast. have two radio shows. Oh, you have two. You want to give them a plug because we got about oh, a little, probably about five more minutes. All right, let me plug this sure, real quick. Sure. So I have two shows. I uh, I am you I have a. Show. Dun, 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 dun. Like, it's okay. KMBY in Monterey Bay, 95.9 FM, 12:40 AM. I have a show on Fridays from 8 until 11 called Funked Up Fridays with Malkalicious. That's right, that's me, and I play all old school funk. So tune in on KMBYRadio.com. Mm -hmm. You can stream it anywhere in the world, or if you're in the Monterey Bay, uh, 95.9 FM or 12:40 AM. That's the first show. So uh, having super fun with that. Mm -hmm. And I have another show on SammyRadio.com. That's Sammy Hager's old internet radio station, mm -hmm. which I am now in charge of. And um, it is called Rock and Roll Happy Hour with Mark and Mike. And that's Mike Vanderhuel, the drummer from y and And uh, we have a three hour show every Thursday from three to 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we interview famous musicians, rock stars from all over the world. We've done 17 shows mm -hmm. and we base the three hour show around them. We can play anything we want and we talk to them about their career and it's pretty cool. The last one we just did was Emilio Castillo from Tower of Power. Excellent. And our next one, I can't tell you, but there's two people and they were in the movie Up in Smoke. So that's all I'm going to give away. But we've had uh, some great, great people. If you want to listen to any of the old podcasts, yeah. Go to just Google Rock and Roll Happy Hour with Mark and Mike, or you can go to the website Podbean, P O D B E A N dot com, and look for Rock and Roll Happy Hour with Mark and Mike. We have 17 shows, and you can listen to them anytime you want. You know what's uh, funny? I've seen some pictures of you. I've, I've obviously I've gone on and looked at you guys. Where's the cigars? 
Where's your in cigar? In my refrigerator. <laughs> okay. Only for golfing. Oh, excellent. <laughs> and then you guys, you guys kind of like, you guys have a good rapport with each other. So you, you've known. Yes, them. absolutely. Uh -huh. yeah, Mike and I were in junior high school band together. He played trumpet and I played sax. So we've known each other that long. Oh, really? Thanks, Mike, for getting me uh, into that level. Uh, if it wasn't for Mike Vanderhul, I wouldn't have done the documentary, been in y &T, mm -hmm. and um, and now he's, we're doing this radio show mm -hmm. together, so it's pretty cool. Well, that is, uh, so you guys have been as friends for what, over 30 years? Yeah, 20, something, something like, like that. that, still. Wow, <laughs> wow, and it, it, you guys seem like you guys have a good time. I've heard you guys. We always on. have a good time. <laughs> yes, yeah, right, Mike? Again. Right, yeah. Mike? <laughs> there you go, brother. Anyhow, um, you should get him on the show. I would like to have Michael on the show if he'd like to come. I mean, is is are they on tour now? Are they playing right now? They have they have a, they're playing up, just they? some uh, some U.S. <coughs> gigs, and uh, because of uh, COVID. COVID and everything, their their main tours COVID. have got uh, canceled and everything has changed. But they are going on tour in Europe if everything <coughs> is okay mm -hmm. uh, later on. I believe in October, mm -hmm. somewhere in there. Look, oh, by the way, mm -hmm. let me see that thing. Okay, if you want to order. On with the show, you can go to, and I'm going to spell it for you, Y-A-N-D-T-R-O-C-K-S dot com. That's Y-N-T-Rocks dot com. Order this here, or you can get it on Amazon Prime. But if you get this from the website, the Y-N-T-Rocks dot com website, you get the bonus DVD. And uh, that, is, that is another two plus hours of extra stuff. And that is like things about Leonard, things about Phil, things about Dave, the fans, things about Joey, all sorts of really cool stuff. So order yours today. How about that, man? How about that? Thank you, Mark. Um, so on with the show. We're going to be closing. See how fast it goes? You know that because yeah. you you got radio time. Yeah. Do that little, in, what you do at night in your funk show. Just do your voice one more time. We're going to be, so we're going to go out right after this. You're listening to Funked Up Fridays with me, Mark Alicious, right here on KMBY 95.9 FM and 1240 AM at KMBY.com, where we f stream Funked Up Fridays with me all over the world, baby. <laughs> that's my radio. Oh, God, that's I great. I do commercials, too, if you need any commercials done, I think. In the future, maybe. I'm a plug machine. Uh, it seems like it. You know, Mark, thank you, man. Thank hey, you. Thanks for thank you. Me on. Thank you for the documentary. Thanks for exchanging, you know, uh, Blue Voodoo CD. I'm ready to play drums in Blue Voodoo. Ooh, easy. Oh, hey, vote for him. Vote for him. Vote for him. Um, I'd like to thank Mark for coming on, sharing his stories. We'll have him come back. In probably six months, maybe a year. We'll see how it goes. Maybe sooner if he comes in blue voodoo. But as <laughs> usual, what we normally do, we give a shout out. We give a kiss to everybody. And thank you once again, everybody, for watching Harmonics. Love you guys. Peace and love. Cheers. Cheers.